Hi everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Danesthetics Medical, and our clinic is located here in Ottawa, Canada. Today, I'm sharing with you all my secrets on how I fill a feminine cheek. You're not going to want to miss this one. I get questions on this all the time. Let's get into it. All right, so before we begin, we have to bring in our assistant, Sarah. Say, hey, Sarah. And what do we see here? Some landmarks, some essential anatomy landmarks that you need to know. First of all, we have the facial artery. We have the infraorbital artery. And then we have the obicularis retaining ligament and the zygomaticus retaining ligament, which is also known as the jugal groove. Okay, so let's start off with the arteries. Facial artery runs deep all the way till about here. And then as it crosses over, it becomes superficial. It also doesn't always stay right in the nasolabial fold. Sometimes it can be a little higher, sometimes a little lower, but this is around the average. And we need to keep that in consideration, knowing that this is always a superficial area. So we want to stay deep with our injections. The problem is, is that there's also a very deep right into the bone foramen here. This is the infraorbital foramen. And this foramen is just basically an opening where nerve branches and these arteries come out. This is the infraorbital artery branch that comes out. How can we avoid hitting that if we're using a needle? Well, there's actually a little bony protective hub that's just on top of that foramen, and therefore it forces the arteries and nerves to come down and out. So they come down and out this way. And what that does is tells us that if you inject deep from the side, right onto the bone, you're going to be a lot safer. Aspirate, use an ultrasound if you can, and that will ensure your safety. But this is generally how I approach it if I'm going to use a needle. Now I want you to pay attention to this ligament and also the fat pad compartments. What's important about fat pad compartments is that we have superficial fat pads and we have deep fat pads. You don't have to memorize all of them, but I do want you to know essentially where your deep medial and deep lateral fat pads are because this is where you want to inject. If you're using a needle, you stay on the bone and you'll be there. But if you're using a cannula, you wanna make sure that you feel two pops going through. The second pop ensures that you're through the muscle into the deep fat pads. Keep that in mind because if you place it too superficially, you're just going to fill up these superficial fat pads. It might look good now whenever you're doing fillers, but you're going to potentially have filler migration that's going to drop in about six months. They're going to look puffy. And there's also a lymphatic drainage system that runs right across there and runs superficially and you could potentially obstruct that. So two really good reasons why you should stay deep. So now you know the importance of staying deep. Let's look at this zygomaticus ligament or the jugal groove. You'll notice often enough in people, they have a little groove right here and right here, and it separates, it causes a little dip and separates these fat pads. This ligament starts from the bone, goes through all the tissues, the muscles up to the skin and pulls everything down. A lot of people assume that if you subsize it with a cannula, you can release that ligament. You're not gonna release it. You're just poking holes through it. You need to literally cut through it, sever it completely in order to let it go. But that ligament's there for a reason. Don't do that. And by poking holes through it, all it's going to do is heal up over time and the healing's going to cause a little scar tissue, possibly forcing it to pull down even more. So I'm not a big advocate for subsizing this ligament. Keep that ligament there, but it gives us an idea of where I want to place my filler and it also tells me where I want to start with my cannula. I always start my cannula right down the midline of this agomaticus ligament and because therefore I have full access everywhere. I have access up here, I have access over there. It's the perfect place to be and this is where you should start placing your cannula. All right, now the fun part, the calculations of where you should place your filler. The whole idea of placing filler in the cheek for a feminine cheek is to create the illusion of lift. Fillers never lift by the way, they just add volume to that area and I can create the illusion of lift pretty well. So this is how I do that. First of all, I'm looking at where volume is lost. After about 25, most people lose mid cheek volume right here. This deep medial sooth here, the first place where we lose fat on the face. And you can see they usually get a little dip there. So if I look at Sarah, that's the first place I'll put my mark. I'll say, I'll have to volumize that first. Next, I wanna look at the apex of the cheek. And the apex is going to be where the maximum light reflex should be. And to find that, I'll take the tail of the eyebrow, drop it straight down, to take the upper ala of the nose and cross it with the upper tragus right here. And I'll have an intersection of that line. I will make a mark right there. And Sarah's is right here. 
This is the first marking, second marking right there. And I'll usually place anywhere from 0.1 to 0 0.2 uh, cc's of a volumizing filler here, depending on how much fat has been lost, to bring it up to where it was before, to where it was restored, nothing more. Then after that, I'm gonna look at the apex of the cheek and I'm gonna do the same thing. The next two points are the areas that are going to transition into um, those two major points, which are going to be here and here. Notice how this one is a little higher, and this one is just in between. Most of the time you'll see, even with myself, I have a little bit of volume loss right there, and that's that intersection where I want to transition it up into the apex, and then after that, just behind it, I'm going to place a little bit of filler behind it to taper it. But I do not want to place filler all the way back to the hairline, and I don't want to fill all this up. It's called, I think, the Barbie lift, and I really don't like it. I find it looks fake. Uh, all that's going to do is really overemphasize the cheek. It actually is one of the main reasons why people end up having the illusion of hollowed temples because they've gone way too far back with the filler. You don't need to do that. Most people, the apex is right here and then it just tapers off slightly. So this is what the whole idea is with the tapering. Apex, mid cheek, a little product right here to, tr to transition it up and then a little bit behind it just to taper it back. And that's basically it. Now, if you're looking for even more detailed information about this treatment, check out my Patreon below. It has everything you need if you're a provider. Till the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care. <laughs> You're blushing. Oh, yeah, I'm blushing at how good looking I am. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. It's like crazy, I'm. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's worth it. I'm happy about it. Like, love it.